right, hello and welcome. How are you all doing tonight? Uh, that's mostly rhetor rhetorical tonight. I know there, there's a lot going on, and we are not really going to be talking about it. I swear, guys. Uh, but I, I do just want to start off the stream by saying I recognize in the world there are people who they believe that words can solve problems. Uh, there are other people who believe that laws solve problems. There are people who believe that force solves problems. I'm someone that believes that God solves problems. Uh, and so while we got this weird stuff going on right now, I just wanted to open us up in a quick word of prayer, and then we'll go ahead and start watching this week's episode, uh, if you would all be so kind as to indulge me. Heavenly Father, I do just want to lift up the day to you. I know there's there's a lot of pain going on right now. People are feeling lost and isolated. Half the nation believes that the other half is stealing an election, and frankly, they're probably both right. I just pray that you would bring peace onto our land, that you'd bring calm, rational minds. Lord, for those suffering right now, and I count myself among those who are troubled by these events that have happened over the past couple months, I just pray that you would be calming our hearts, because we know that you are not taken by surprise, Lord. You have seen all this, for you knew it was going to happen. I pray that you'd be raising up men and women to be leaders in our nation, elected officials who would bring about laws that honor and glorify you. I pray that the truth would come out, and that those who thought they, they could lie in secret would have their sins exposed. Father, we love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And hey, women. <laughs> oh, gosh. That that was something so dumb, but at the same time, at least that made me laugh. I'm like, okay, he's an idiot. I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> idiot away, my friend. Wave that virtue, virtue flag. Toot your whistle. Oh... Oh, how fun. The best part is, I think the guy's a pastor. Is he... Pastor. <laughs> oh, and let's see. What do we got going on over in the chat today? Uh, I've pinned a message, so I can't see the very first chat, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to guess it was Professor Brainy Specs saying something to me about the best of all guest stars, was it? Who was the best of all guest stars? Was it? Oh, it's Darwin, of course. Dar Darwin, of course, the best of all guest stars. And as he's saying, Lewis slash Lewis slash Lucas uh, added in for good measure. And uh, let's see, Thomas is saying my last stream for a while. Well, I hope not, Thomas. We love having you around here. I know, I know there's a lot going on. I know it's it's good to disconnect. I will absolutely say that. But uh, I, I want you to know here on on every Tuesday stream, which I know it's Wednesday. Sorry about that, guys. I I did a complete reformat of my computer. Oh, it's nice right now. It, it is rough to reinstall everything. It's rough to realize the things you forgot to back up, uh, which always happens. But man, just having having a fresh install of Windows, my computer's just blazing, and I'm so happy that it's working again. Uh, was I saying? Oh, but I wanted to let you... So we're late on this stream. But I want you to let, let you know, and everyone, not just Thomas, that every Sequest stream... In every virtual pub, I am really committed to keeping politics to a bare minimum. You saw I opened up with prayer. I'm not saying one way or another what's going on, guys. You know what's out there. Make up your minds for yourself. But but I do want you to know that these regular streams I do, they're safe places, which I know that sounds so snowflakey, but you guys know what I mean. We're not going to be talking about politics. When we get into a fight, we're going to get into a fight over Picard versus Kirk. Uh, we're going to get into a fight between Stamets versus uh, Scotty, which, I mean, <laughs> an Irishman versus a little blonde boy. Yeah, uh, the Irishman's going to win. Or the Scotsman, excuse me. The Scotsman's going to win. Uh, but that's the stuff we're going to talk about. So I, I hope you at least come in here, here, Thomas, because we do love having you around. Uh, and I, I promise we're going to keep this light. Um, we're going to keep things fun. Excuse me. And yes, Matthew's late. Sorry about that. But I'm here. I actually got it going. It was down to the last second, including uh, mistyping of the title. But we're here. And hopefully hopefully, I get my, uh, my video playing working. I'm honestly not sure if it will do it or not because of the way I got things set up tonight. We'll find out. 
In fact, it looks like it's not. Crap. <laughs> I was I was pulling it up here real quick, and it is not. It, it, it's not going. Is that gonna start it? There we go. Okay, I can do this. Uh, and, and the reason I'm I'm so confused tonight is because I have found a way to use OBS Studio to do all of my things. So instead of having to have XSplit and Streamlabs and OBS, I have just one instance of OBS with three virtual cameras running. It's amazing. I love it so much. Uh, this is this is such a better way of doing things. And how's it hitting my computer? Let's see what my performance is at. It's yeah, it's kind of taxing. It's using about half my CPU and um, about 30% of my GPU, which I got a nice GPU. So it's, it's a little taxing to have three virtual cameras, but it's working and I'm, I'm very happy about it. Uh, and then let's see. Yes. And a woman, uh, I swore. Did I really? And Thomas is saying st static. I think we got the static fixed. Um, did, did I actually swear? Thomas, what did I swear? I didn't notice anything. I think it may be... He may be counting a word that I usually wouldn't count as a swear word as a swear word. We'll, we'll see. Thomas will let me know uh, what what's going on like that. Uh, Thomas is saying the last three Sunday virtual pubs were Monday and now Sequest is a day late. I'm confusing you. Yeah, I know. But Thomas, hey, virtual pub is just going to be Monday. From now on, virtual pub is Monday. Uh, because Sunday night, it clearly wasn't working out. I was hoping it would, but it's not. So from here on out, Virtual Pub is on Monday. So hopefully no more confusion there. Oh, and I swear, that's what I, okay, I literally said the words, I swear. Sorry, Thomas. I'll try to be better in the future. Speaking of trying to be better, hopefully, hopefully I, I'm looking like I'm looking up to heaven, but no, I'm looking at my vent on the ceiling. Hopefully I got a uh, the sound stuff worked out so that when the heater kicks on, that high pitch noise that's been going on, I hope I got that fixed for you guys because I know no one likes that. So let me go ahead and get this started. I've, I've hopefully given everyone just a few minutes to head over to the watch party room, which if you've never been here before, which I, I'm pretty sure everyone's been here before, the way this works is I have pinned in the comment section a link to my uh, cytu.be room and you can go there and you will be able to watch Sequest episode 16 season 1 with us live right now. If you're watching this later you will not be able to see this in the, in the room. The only point of this room is it syncs up all of our watching at the same time. If you're watching this later just go over to peacocktv.com or peacock.tv I forget which one and you will be able to watch all the seasons of Sequest for free. It does require that you sign up an account. All you have to do is give them your email and you'll have a free account. Uh, here's John. He's back again. They're saying I have static. How do I sound? Uh, you know, there's, a, there's a tiny, tiny bit, but it doesn't bother me. Like, it's, it's not an issue. And hopefully, you say you have static. Hopefully, I don't have a high pitched banshee screaming whenever the heater turns on. So, you know, <laughs> we're not going to be perfect. That's okay. So, as I was saying, come on over to the watch party room. If you don't want to watch the watch party, or if you're only on like a cell phone or something, I will be providing clips right here in the box below us. They will come in every five seconds, and John and I will be letting you know what people are saying along with kind of, you know, our gut reactions as this episode goes on. And let's see, Thomas is saying, Cinnabon Bunny, I hate stegator stegosauruses right now. They are what horses are to you. <laughs> oh, Thomas, you've been playing the Lego game, haven't you? The the uh, Lego Jurassic Park game. How has that game been? I hope that it's uh, it's been pretty fun for you. I love all the Lego games. I think that they have this great mix of humor while at the same time being mostly true to like whatever they're referencing, like the, the star Wars Lego saga. Great game, especially for the Wii. And let's see, they were, uh, was playing Jurassic world evolution. So I, I'm guessing the Sega sources are just really, really annoying. Uh, 
the herbivore ones that keep escaping settled down when I gave them a separate pin. Oh, it's Cinnabon, you're playing it too. I'll have to check it out soon. And let's see, Matthew will be doing another watch party night soon. That's true, Professor Brainy Specs. We need to talk about that. Uh, and it, it might be something where I alternate between seasons. We'll see. Maybe, maybe we could do like a Friday night. We'll talk. We'll talk, Professor, because uh, what's going on is I have never seen Babylon 5. And uh, Professor Brainy Specs and I are thinking about watching that together in another watch party. So we'll, we'll see, guys. Uh, with that said, I will stop pontificating and I will go ahead and get this stream going. If you are watching later on, I'll give you a quick countdown. Get ready to hit that play button, guys. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's do this. Okay, so as the episode starts off, uh, it's not immediately obvious, but what's going on is that we are getting a recap from the like third or fourth episode, The Devil's Window, in which they were firing a magma buoy into the Earth's crust. And the idea is that it would kind of bob along the lava stream, and at some point it would pop out of the lava stream, and they were hoping that they'd be able to use the data from the probe to figure out the when and where an eruption might be going on. And it was a pretty decent episode. No, you know what? I think it was the second episode. It was way too early, whichever one it was, because the conflict of it was brought about because Darwin got sick. And, you know, obviously I had like zero cares for Darwin in the third episode. Yeah, it was third because the first, it was a two-parter for the first episode, to be or not to be. And the very next episode, Darwin got sick and they were abandoning the science team to try and get the dolphins saved. And I was like, I hate Darwin. This is not the right place to have an episode about a crewman dying, and especially not this pet dying, who eventually becomes an ensign. Thanks for that little spoiler, Thomas. Uh, well, at least now that you've come around on Darwin, you could have more of an impact, right? Yeah, it, it, it would. Like, Darwin was just rough in that pilot. But if they had the episode now, I would be halfway concerned. It would be like seeing, you know, seeing Porthos from Enterprise die. You know, it'd be sad. It wouldn't be the moral quandary that they made it out to be. But I would at least be a little not stonehearted. I'm frozen. Am I really? You look okay to me. Let's go over it. No, I'm not frozen. Are you saying my heart? I might be pretty cold-hearted. Oh, you know what, Thomas? I might have just been holding really still for a second. <laughs> so we are doing a quick pan over of the guest characters for this uh, for this episode, and the characters are um, we really don't know much about them. They're just on this island, and for whatever reason, they're all in this little hut. You got the old guy, you got two younger guys, and then uh, you got the obligatory female character. But the probe comes crashing into their hut. You know, UEO totally not concerned about property damage. And they're the guy who, the old guy, the grandpa type guy, who is apparently the girl's do uh, dad is really upset because he realizes UEO and that it's a military probe. And then you start to hear this wind up sequence happening. And the, the dad lets them know that this is a homing beacon that he's sending out a signal. And why now? Why now? He's saying I was so close. So he's really upset for some reason that the UEO is going to be coming to his island. I mean, maybe it's his personal island. We don't know. But the daughter is really supportive. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, Daddy. Daddy, I'm sorry. We we're so close. But you find out that we the, this... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just saying we have the obligatory crazy guy who threatens to kill somebody. Yeah. And then we get the, 
the wonderful was it John Williams? John uh, I think it's John Debney. John Debney, yes. Do 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 I love this music. I will say this too. Uh, they have done a really good job throughout this series to get me really interested in these characters. I, the first episode, they did a nice job introducing them, but they have actually grown and developed these characters uh, such that I actually care about what happens to them. Yeah, it's refreshing based on some of the stuff we get these days. Yeah. Hey, Captain Trek, how you doing tonight? I hope that you're well. So, of course, and this is one of the interesting things. Uh, last week, Bridger was out of the episode, and this week, he's also out of the episode. Everyone is doing, like, this vacation training thing over in Pearl Harbor, and so... Uh, Krieg tries to give <laughs> tries to give Lewis a little slip of paper, you know, hey, if you can escape the old man, look up this this lady, give her a call. And, you know, Bridger steals it and he says, How old is this candy? And Craig goes, Well, she's forty three. <laughs> and Bridger like just rolls his eyes and crumples it up. And Craig goes, Well no, she has a she has a six year old daughter. They're really nice. I thought it'd be a, a fun thing. He goes, Oh, okay. And Craig gives this look like, Oh wow, I'm glad he bought that load of tripe. <laughs> So Ford is again left in charge, and we're finding out, or at least the crew is finding out, that the uh, magnet buoy has surfaced, and so they are considering going to uh, retrieve it. And as luck would have it, they're only a few hours away. So they're going to have to pick up or meet en route the uh, the scientist from last time. I forgot his name. I think his name is Raleigh. Yes. Raleigh Young. And then Admiral Paris is here. You know, just checking in. He honestly doesn't... He really doesn't do anything at this point in the episode. I guess they're only showing him for him being in the episode later on. So he transfers a call over to to the mobile unit of Raleigh Young. <laughs> and Raleigh Young is his usual wonderful self yelling at his chauffeur or taxi driver or something. We are the government. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, he's saying, you know, you can speed. We're the government. It doesn't matter if you break the law. How is Sequest so on point? <laughs> but his big concern is that wherever it spits out, there's going to be an eruption soon. So that's why he's so concerned, that he's worried that the magma buoy will be immediately buried under molten lava again so he's not worried that the buoy will be damaged just that they'll be unable to retrieve it because you know there'll be a lot of rock in the way springtime wants to know was the food on sequest as bad as the rumors say no not at all springtime and in fact uh, we had great food we were the i mean we were the enterprise of the submarines all the other subs wish they had the food that we had access to I love the, the the cheap aluminum foil that's supposed to be a, a solar panel right there. He had to adjust it to get power back for his laptop. Yes, Cinnabon, we had fresh dolphin, but only the once. I was in the advanced future of 2018, solar panels are much smaller. Yes. And it's funny because, uh, let's see, right there, you can see in this clip, 
on the left hand side there was a solar panel like a real one so i guess maybe okay here's what was happening that wasn't a solar panel he was just trying to reflect the sun excuse me into his solar panel which actually does make sense in a heavily forested jungle area like this you would have to make sure that if you're like under a tent or something to either set your solar panel in the sunlight or reflect sunlight onto the solar panel to get enough juice. So the crazy guy is hiding. Well, not, not the crazy. One of the crazy guys is hiding up in the tree, keeping a lookout for the UEO to show up. And the gun crazy guy He's down digging because they're looking for something. And the, the gun crazy guy is like, get out of the tree. Come help us dig. But the crazy guy is like, nah, nah. I, someone's got to keep a lookout. But as luck would have it, uh, they seem to have found something right now. And that is a well-dug hole. All my holes are not straight down like that. Whenever I dig, everything is like always that nasty, you know, sloped sides and stuff. I don't think these are professional hole diggers. They know what they're doing. <laughs> yes. And there's, there's something, I'm not sure if they explained who this was yet. But you found the gold placard that was attached to this guy's desk. He's like, the wood has deteriorated. It's all gone. But we, it, we have clear proof that it was this guy's desk. And while they're celebrating, of course, that's when the UEO helicopters show up. And no one's happy about this. But, I mean, is anyone ever really happy when the government shows up in a helicopter? I feel like that's almost required to be a bad day for everyone else who's not in the helicopter. Yeah, I think <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I love the suit that Raleigh's in. Just on the middle of a tropical island, three-piece suit. Dark three-piece suit. Looks sharp, though. <laughs> and Crazy Eyes wants to know how much dynamite they got left. Because he's... <laughs> he's going to go blow them up. Because why not? I mean, that seems like a rational response. Attacking a government helicopter. Nothing could go wrong with that plan. <laughs> yeah. And like, this is... This is one of the things that was kind of a huh moment for me. The tension that they establish between these two groups is really doesn't make much sense. Like, I don't get why they don't just bring the buoy to them from the get go. Like, oh, hey, we are researchers. We found your buoy. Take it and leave, please. I think they explained somewhere that it's, it's technically illegal for them to be there. So I guess they're worried they're going to get in trouble. Hmm. And Krieg has bravely volunteered to watch the base camp. And so he's stripping down, going to get some sun sunscreen. And Raleigh's annoyed by it, but Ford's like, I don't care. He wants to watch the base camp. I don't care if he does it with his shirt off. <laughs> and Raleigh's like, I'm wearing a three-piece suit. That man can keep his shirt on. <laughs> And they stop Crazy Eyes from, you know, grabbing the dynamite and blowing it up. But he actually brings up something that everyone else should have realized, that it has a homing beacon. They're going to come find it. And everyone goes, oh, you're right. We should get it out of our hut. Yeah, maybe you should have been doing it earlier instead of digging. Just yeah, an they, idea. <laughs> they literally could have put it, like, right on the beach somewhere. And then they could have gotten it and been off the island super quick. But I guess if they had done that, we wouldn't have had the rest of the episode. And unfortunately, they have to bust up more of their little hut to get it through the door. 
Because it, I guess when it came in, it came in at a high angle, so they can't get it out through that hole. They have to make make a low angle to get out. But hey, I I'm willing to believe that that is a ceramic buoy that has been scorched by magna. That magma. They did a good job with its a uh, with its looks. See, Springtime wants to know, was I really required to give my paycheck to the command crew on the Sequest DSV? No, no, that that's that's fake news. We were allowed to keep our paychecks. It's just the paychecks were so small, it was as it felt as if we were having to give a bunch of money up to the command crew. And I mean, little known fact, we had to buy most of our own test equipment. Doctor uh Dr. West Phelan, you know, she, she had the connections where she got just about everything she wanted. But the rest of us, you know, you broke a test tube, it came out of your own paycheck. They've determined that the buoy is moving, so everybody's grabbing a bunch of guns because they think it might be a terrorist attack of some kind. And there goes the heater, so hopefully you guys aren't hearing the high-pitched squeal now. Which, you know, it on, on the one hand, it almost seems uh, really odd that you would assume, okay, it's moving, therefore it's terrorists. But, to be fair, the past couple episodes, they have literally been dealing with uh, an armed invasion force coming onto their sub. They were dealing with the astronauts who were being picked up by a foreign power that was quasi hostile to them. At least the military section of it was the president was, was trying to seek peace, but the military side of it was actively engaged with them. So, I mean, there was a lot of reasons to be like, maybe this area does have some hostile entities within it. And Hey, multi gunman, how you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm doing fine. You know what? I am. Yeah, there's a lot going on in the world, but I am doing fine. My family is healthy. My loved ones are safe. I'm doing fine. <laughs> Springtime saying the future of 2018 looks really cheap. Well, remember that was like that was 2 years ago springtime. We've had some advancements since then. And honestly, uh, ruggedized equipment is really bulky and cheap looking. Like, you wouldn't think it, but uh, I keep looking at ruggedized laptops because the, the laptop I have is it's a good home use and office use laptop. Really good and powerful. Not great at being outdoors. So I've been thinking about getting one that's more ruggedized. And those ruggedized things are, you're lucky if you can get a 14-inch screen on them. And they still weigh like 10 pounds. I mean, it's... They're, they're beefy things. So they found some dog food. So they know they further know they're not alone on the island. And having found the buoy, they decide to continue to hunt down the people. Which, I mean... I guess it doesn't hurt to figure out who you're sharing an island with. So Ford gives a couple warning shots in the ground telling them to stop running and to get on his belly. Uh... Meanwhile, Krieg is trying to chase down Crazy Guy. And it's it's some odd odd editing in this section. As as Krieg is running through the forest, like I'm not sure what's going on, but it, it doesn't look like he's really running through a forest. Like, did you notice that? Like it almost looked as if he wasn't moving, but maybe something was moving in front of him. Oh, I didn't notice, but you could be right. 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what it was. I, I think he was running. I mean, we've seen them running through the forest this whole time. It's just some odd little quirk of that that scene threw my eyes off. But they do find out, like, the crazy eyes trips over this grave, and you find out that the grave belonged to his dog. That's why there's a can of dog food. And they're like, oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe uh, we jumped the gun shooting at y'all. <laughs> I think that last guy's name was Bennett. Or at least Benet. And you find out that the owner of the desk uh, was Blackbeard's partner. And that they are treasure hunters. They're, they're looking for this treasure that's been out here for centuries. Barely it cost their, their reputations to go on this hunt. So they're not especially eager to leave. Now which one is Mac? Is he crazy eyes or is he gun crazy? Yeah, I think Mac is the crazy guy. Okay, so apparently Mac had a tenured position, which I don't know if that speaks poorly to the education system or if that's supposed to show like how much of a toll this has taken on him where he used to be a tenured professor in university and now he's kind of cuckoo, wanting to blow people up. Yeah, I think that's the idea. He's been on that island way too long. And they're warning them that, you know, they're, we have reason to believe that your life is in imminent danger. We suggest you get out of here. And they say no. And and I love this part. I love it because they just leave. They don't try and force them. They say, hey, you know, we've warned you of danger. We we haven't been sp specific because it's classified, but we've warned you. Therefore, we're not going to force you. It's your your life. Yeah, then before leaving, Krieg tries to sell him something. <laughs> that was great. Uh, hey, Robert Rose Jr., how are you doing? I was saying the island doesn't matter unless it's the Munster Island from the Godzilla universe. No, unfortunately not. Uh, springtime wants to know did the u.s navy submariner ever even make of of you guys on sequest because of all the cheap equipment and stuff did the u.s navy submariner even make uh sorry springtime i am not that sentence isn't working for me i'm not i, I think it might just be me misreading something it happens sometimes I, i've been going pretty full bore for the past 36 hours getting my computer back up to speed as it is so my brain may not all be there. <laughs> what little of it usually is there, to say the least. So now we're getting the the science section of this. This uh, well, I, I, normally I would call him a red shirt, but uh, this crewman, he's trying to figure out why this buoy is actually useful, like how it can work. It's, it's just sonar, right? And uh, Dr. Roland is explaining that, or Raleigh, excuse me, is explaining that by using the sonar, having tracked through the, the magma tube, hopefully they can figure out where the weak points are so they might be able to predict where a volcano is going to erupt or where an eruption would happen. And yes, Cinnabon Bunny, there is very little sea or questing in this episode. Which, to be fair, I would say that for most of these episodes. Kind of like TNG. There wasn't much Star Trekking going on in Star Trek TNG. And there's a, there's a lot of great things happening, just not much trekking through the stars. I really wish my data cables lit up like that when I plugged them in. Yeah, it really makes them look sharp. It does, and you would think you could do it. You just take your standard USB cable and steal a little bit of the juice to light up a couple LEDs to go through a clear PVC like uh, 
fiber pipe. And it wouldn't be bright, but it would give a little bit of lighting as it goes goes down the path. Another oh. wanting a simulation of the Yeah. <laughs> Rale is quite quite enthused. Which I'll be honest, uh, whenever I finally get something working, this is kind of my reaction to. I mean, I, I don't pick up female coworkers and give them a big hug, but I do the the rejoicing, the yes, I did it. And of course, Doctor Westphalen just wants to know. Okay, yes, you did it. Now, can you predict where the eruption is going to happen? And sure enough, he types in a couple things, and they find out that it's it's going to be on the island. Uh, and Professor Brainy Specs, thank you for for interpreting the sentence. Uh, says I think Springtime was asking if the U.S. Navy submariners ever made fun of us because we had cheap equipment. Uh, no, thankfully they didn't because they never got to see our equipment. We didn't share. Sequest stuff was for Sequest only. And so Ford is talking with uh, Morgan Shepard over here. They say the, the UEO is too big to care about four treasure hunters because they weren't willing to declassify it. So they could give them a reason to leave. And Mr. Shepard is saying, well, did you tell the UEO about the treasure? Ford's like, no, why? And so he's he's letting him know that the treasure was believed to have the crown jewels, which you know came in around a million dollars. And the uh, plates of Francis Bacon are completely priceless. So... You know, maybe lead with that next time. <laughs> yes, and a bun bunny. It is Colonel Sanders. We finally get some Darwin action. Parker's trying to put a fetch with him. I still can't believe that's an animatronic. <laughs> so the second time, Darwin is unwilling to go get it. And... <laughs> and for, and uh, Crocker's like, go get it, go get it. And Darwin goes, you get it. <laughs> get it yourself. Uh, Robert's saying the cheap Krogan technology, uh, Chinese tech is better than Krogan tech. <laughs> you know, we, we give Chinese tech uh, a bum deal a lot of times, but Gosh, when you when you think about it, oh no, did this break? Whoops, I think my. Oh well, uh, when you think about it, our most of our phones are Chinese tech. I mean, I got I got this stuff made over in China. Oh, you can't see it because it's a green screen. I got this stuff made over in China, and it's, it's real nice. Let's see if that will focus. Yeah, that's real nice. Well, springtime asks, why don't they just arrest the treasure hunters until after the eruption and let them go? Well, I think Ford says he, he's not allowed to force them to leave. So he can't just arrest them for no reason. At least that's yeah. the impression that I get. And remember, this was before the Patriot Act. You couldn't just arrest people for no reason and detain them for 24 hours. You actually had a legal cause. Crazy world of the past. So everyone's everyone's trying to find an excuse to get them because the situation is extremely uh, dangerous. The data is, and they're saying, look, the data is extremely consistent. We have exactly ten hours to get these people off, and we're seeing that the whiskers are detecting the sea floor swelling as the magma fills up this uh, lava pocket or magma pocket. And in exactly 10 hours, the 
volcano will erupt and the people will die on the island. <laughs> Springtime is saying that I'm forgetting that Sequest was built in China by North Korean workers. So the dad is begging with his daughter to get off the island is too dangerous and she's refusing. You know, she, she spent just as much time on the island as he has. And, you know, this is everything she's been struggling for her whole life for and she's not willing to, to give this up. Yeah, shut up and dig, Bobby. <laughs> So back they come in the dead of night and Ford has brought Dr. Raleigh Young with him this time because Raleigh, uh, I guess I forgot to mention this in the last scene, Ford said he's going to break the rules and tell them and Raleigh says, let me do it because, you know, I I'm at the end of my career anyway. Don't ruin your career by disobeying orders. <laughs> Doctor, I, I wish I could quote what he just said, uh, but it was it was a fantastic, classy uh, burn on on Bobby, the gun crazy guy. And he's letting them know that in exactly seven hours, the bell will toll and the volcano will erupt. <laughs> Instead of us funny and saying, look, they even dug their own grave. Wasn't that kind of them? And while Ford is trying to get them to leave, the, the dad guy is saying, you have no idea what it's like to devote your life toward one glorious moment and then have that snatched away. And Raleigh just steps in and says, you know, you're right. He's too young, but I know. And it's ironic that your moment and my moment have found themselves happening at the same time and conflicting. And so now he's explaining what the, the device they picked up was, that it was a magma buoy, and he inserted it into the ground 9,000 feet deep. It traveled the river of lava to get here, and that river of lava is about to erupt. And he's letting him know that by, by telling them this, I've violated a sacred oath. Like, I, I broke the law. And, and the, the dad actually, he believes him. He's like, you know what? Thank you. We need to go ahead and get off the island. And I guess that's one of the plates, by the way, of Francis Bacon that he's holding. Which, between that and the, the little desktop platter they got, they have a lot of proof about what they found. Oh, I think it was supposed to be the plays of Francis Bacon. Is it the thing they were talking about? Oh, that makes more sense. And of course, Mac is nowhere to be found. And you hear this great explosion happening. <laughs> the scene cuts over and you find Mac hooping and hollering around the destroyed <laughs> the destroyed wreckage of the Sequest sub. Uh oh, the transmitters were both into the launch. That sounds like not a great plan. Wasn't it though? So they're, they're stuck here. And what's worse is, since they took a civilian craft, there's no backup system. And they are are stuck. And Mac is just, you know, running around. Burn, baby, burn! So Mac is back up in the tree doing his monkey thing. And Robert is saying, I'm loving my Google Pixel 4a 5G. 
I don't see the need to pay ridiculous amounts for a smartphone. I agree. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but the factories in America, we don't, we don't have any factories that can do this kind of work. Like we, we've offshored all our fabrication stuff. And it's, it's kind of too expensive to use American workers. We've set up a system of governance that makes it expensive. <laughs> and Mac is realizing his great mistake. And so he's he's not even willing to try and get away. He's just going to stay in the tree. So this is the closest I'm going to get to Rich, so I might as well die close to it. And again, people let him choose. Uh, they're not going to try and try and make him leave. Because it's, it's not like they really have much of a chance on the shore. I mean, I guess their thought process of, is if they're lucky, the lava will go out the other side of the island. And they'll be safe on this side. The multi-gunman saying, this episode of Sequest is brought to you by Platypus, the national animal of Kuroga. Is it a mammal? Is it a reptile? No one knows. Or not a, reptile, a waterfowl. And can it work in the mines? Well, you know, it has those little poison barbs on it in the back of their feet, but they're not quite strong enough to mine. But they're pretty good at digging in soft soil. Meanwhile, back on Sequest, the crew is realizing that something's gone wrong with Ford. Now they, not only they, that, that and, sorry. No, go ahead. Their estimate of when the um, volcano was going to erupt was uh, two hours slow. It's going to happen much sooner than they expected. Oh yeah, yeah. The 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 buoy's chronometer was off by two hours. And sure enough, cutting back to the island, we find it is trimmering as the eruption starts to to come to its its head. <laughs> and and Mac is just doing his insanity thing up in the tree. Sequest it also seems that since sorry. No, go ahead. I think it seems that since Bridger and Ford are both gone that uh the doctor is in charge of the ship at the moment. That's true. All all the ranking staff apparently is gone. Except no, uh, Krieg is around. He should be, because he passed his his uh, captain's exam, or officer exam last week. Which is why you see him in new, new duds this week. He's in his officer duds. Yeah, but he <laughs> just passed. <laughs> Oh gosh. So Bobby's doing this huge confession to the girl. He goes, I, I love the way you smell. I love the way you, you look lying on the sand. You know, it, even if it's just for a minute, you know, say you love me back. And she's like, no, I, I don't love you. I'm sorry. And so everyone's just like, awkward. Uh, wasn't he already an officer? No. No, he wasn't. He was... Let's see, what was he? Was he a lieutenant? And now he's a lieutenant commander? He got some in yeah, promotion. Yeah, I'm not sure if he became an officer or he just got a promotion. But I'm guessing he has far less seniority than the doctor has. Yeah. And so Dr. Westphalen realizes that if they get the magma flow to depressurize in a different location, then it won't erupt on the island. And, and uh, she says, okay, fire right there. And the guy goes, I, I'm not qualified to fire a torpedo. 
And she goes, you're not firing a torpedo. You're firing a sensitive research uh, device. And she goes, I, I don't care. Just fire the torpedoes. And, and the guy goes, all of them? And she goes, uh, I don't know. Uh, how much do we need? So they're, they're figuring out where they need to be in order to fire. But everyone, everyone is still kind of really confused about, can they fire? I mean, they're, they're starting the firing sequence, but no one is authorized to actually fire right now. <laughs> and the Admiral calls in and Sam Raimi is like, he's on the phone. She goes, oh, not now. He goes, well, I have to, sorry. <laughs> and Admiral Paris is like, do you realize what you've done? By activating your firing sequence, you brought us to DEFCON 1. Why is this lady even in charge? <laughs> have you all lost your minds? <laughs> she She just shuts it off real quick. But thankfully, the trimmering of the Earth has displaced just enough dirt for him to find the plays, thank you, John, of Francis Bacon. And, you know, a box of gold. Silver ingots, stuff like that. Hey, Daniel's Hot Topic, how you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and now Captain Bridger is involved. With a Hawaiian shirt, no less. <laughs> so she quickly fills them in on what's going in on. We got 20 seconds before the volcano erupts. And she's like, fire already. See, so Cinnabon Bunny saying, woke quest. Humorously not. Everyone is really confused as to why she's in charge. She's being told to stand down by the Admiral. But Captain Bridger is saying, you know, do it. Your science works. Do it. So she fires off. Uh, now that they finally got authorization from the captain, they fire off the nine torpedoes. <laughs> Thomas Potts is saying, son of a bird, the candy at work is gone. Now I'm pissed. Thomas, that is something worth getting pissed about. Let's see. Uh, we're going, John. Oh, I was just saying that the torpedoes hit just in time to vent the lava out to sea. Hey Tiki Doom, how you doing? Saying I'm feel or I'm Buzz feels good. Well, the Bible does say that alcohol is a uh, is not fit for kings, but it is for the relief of of the suffering. It's a bit of an abridged version, but it's in the Proverbs. And that's right, Daniel. It is the guy who killed Jaws. And so Mac is so excited. Look, it's the plays. And Bobby's just, you know, looking really upset. And Mac goes, you told her? I told you never to tell her. And the dad saying, I, I never noticed you growing up. The years went by so fast, but I guess it's time. Uh, Springtime wants to know, how did Sequest get all those North Korean weapons? They bought them. They're part of the United Earth Oceans. And uh, apparently, now that they found the treasure, they're just giving it out for free. Dr. Westphalen has uh, Captain Steve B 
Bonet's Cutlass. And uh, the girl's dad asked uh, asked her to give it asked to get the nameplate from the desk over to Bridger. All this stuff should be in a museum. I feel like I'm Indiana Jones. This belongs in a museum. <laughs> and, and Bridger is telling Wes Phelan that the UEO is very unhappy about her her actions. And she goes, well, what was I supposed to do? And, and Bridger's like, I know, I know. It's just you tore up a mile and a half of the seafloor. You used nine torpedoes when five would have sufficed. Admiral Noyce and I are still arguing about who's going to pay for the four unauthorized torpedoes. <laughs> and she says, you know what I would say? I would say darn the torpedoes and full speed ahead. And then we find out our weekly scientific truth of the the week. That sentence kind of got away from me. But we find out that they actually are using simographs sim to see, you know, where a volcano might be erupting. Because as we, as we uh, get the seism seismographic data through the Earth's core, it travels at different speeds depending on if it's going, uh, like, laterally through mantle or if it's cutting through part of the Earth's core, the different materials cause the sound waves to travel at different rates. And so we're able to kind of figure out exactly where pressure is building up, or at least approximately where pressure is building up. And they were able to use this to kind of predict where uh, we're going to get an eruption. And that was back in the far-flung future of 2018. And there's somebody who's saying that they feel like they're being ignored. Just thought I'd point that out. Uh, if they are, it's probably because I haven't gotten to their comments yet. I'm still up on the multi-gunman's No way, Bird of Prey 5 killed Jaws, and you know it. Did he, though? I think someone else might have helped. Uh, Thomas is saying, I demand you watch Jaws 3. It is an epic movie known for state-of-the-art graphics. Is it, Thomas? Is it? I have seen Jaws 1, and I think that's only in bits and pieces. I don't think I've ever sat down in front to back, watched all of Jaws, let alone Jaws 2 or 3. Although now I have watched Sharknado 1 and 2, which Sharknado 1, mm, so good. I love Sharknado 1. Sharknado 2, uh, you know, it didn't didn't land it for me. We'll see how Sharknado 3 holds up. All the way to 6. Let's see. Thomas is saying, Bird wouldn't know if it was a shark or an elephant. Hey, you be careful what you say about our glorious leader. I think Bird could tell the difference between a shark or an elephant. Let's see. Uh... Tiki of Doom saying, I can't remember the black actor's name, but he was better than this. What are you talking about? He was, he was, oh, are you talking about Ford? Or are you talking about the, uh, the scientist? So you had Commander Ford, who was the younger black actor. And he also played in a sci-fi show called Seven Days. Then you had Dr. Raleigh Young. And I I don't remember what all he played in. Um, I remember him as the narrator in the movie Babe. I don't know what else he's been in. Really? Huh. Uh, Daniel, top topic wants to know, did I hear about what happened in the Capitol today? Yes, I did, Daniel, but we're not going to be talking about that. Um, everyone's aware of what's going on there. If you're not aware, open up a news source. We're here to have fun. We're not going to get in, in politics on this stream. Maybe on a Let's Play stream, but uh, not on a Sequest stream. <laughs> uh, Thomas is saying, my last stream and Matthew's ignoring me. I am not, Thomas. And no, not your last stream. Come back for at least the, the virtual pubs. 
In fact, you need to come onto the virtual pub. I, I want to know what your favorite drink is. And I, I want you to, I want it to be like a fancy drink, like a cocktail or something, something you have to mix up. And I, I'd love to uh, have you up on the pub. Maybe if I ever did it at a time when you weren't at work, I, I could actually have you up on the pub. But uh, apparently I, I only choose times that you're working. I'm a bad friend. Gosh. <laughs> uh, Tiki's shocked. I know. I need to watch Jaws. I need to watch all of Jaws. I'm pretty sure I've seen about 80% of the movie, but I do need to finish it out. Like, watch it front to back. Uh, Springtime is saying I should watch Mac and Me? Uh, Mac and Me. The name is familiar, but... Let's see. Oh. 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 Yeah. I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to pass on. I don't know. Maybe, maybe anti Trekker and I can watch that on one of our really bad movie nights, but. Uh, for anyone who, like myself, is trying to figure out what on earth Mac and Me is, let me go ahead and do a quick screen share here. There we are. There, There is Mac and Me. 1988 movie. Yes. Uh, the, that, that picture alone, if you're familiar with Mac and Me, that should be answering all your questions right there. Love those 80s effects. Oh, yeah. It, it's weird because, like, E.T. came out in what? Was it 84? Was it 89? I don't remember. E.T. 82. E.T. came out in 1982, and it had better looking practical effects than Mac and Me in 88. Yeah, so I, I doubt Spielberg was involved with Mac and Me. That might have a little bit of effect on the budget. True, true. And did Jim Henson help out with E.T.? I don't know. Let's see. E.T., the audiobook. It's, I wonder who... Let, let's try and find out real quick. Okay, E.T., the extraterrestrial on Wikipedia. Let's do a quick search here for Jim Henson. Nope. Muppets. Nope. Okay, so probably not. If Jim Henson was involved in it, it would have said something. And oh gosh, I'm okay. Over over on Wikipedia, the ET, ET the Extraterrestrial says it was produced by Steven or Kathleen Kennedy gets top billing, followed by Steven Spielberg. Did she really produce this though? Like I know she's been a long, a long time member of the uh, uh, Spielberg's team, but did she really produce it, people, or is this an update? Well, I know her name is on a lot of the stuff that Spielberg did. I don't know how much of the work she actually did herself. Let's see. It says that. Producer Kathleen Kennedy visited Jules Stein Eye Institute to study real and glass eyes. She hired the Institute staffers to create E.T.'s eyes, which she felt were particularly important in engaging the audience. So apparently, yes, she really, really did produce it. Still, top billing over Steven Spielberg? That's weird. Not because she's a girl and he's a guy, but like, Steven Spielberg, this was his, his baby project, like, you wouldn't think he would uh wouldn't have top billing, you know. I guess since all the other stuff has his name plastered on it, he felt he could give that up. But I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. I'm what I'm ready for her to leave Lucas Films. Let's see. The multi gunman is saying that Thomas Pot's favorite drink is Juicy Lucy. Uh, I am not familiar with Juicy Lucy, and I'm kind of afraid to put that into my search bar, to be honest. 
never know what I'm going to get from you guys. Thomas Potts might come on if I had a different co-host. Maybe. Or a different host. Because let's face it, uh, Jeff for host is what we need here. Jeff, you actually, you really do need to do a like a, a live stream thing. Because I think you would have really fun topics to talk about. And I finally watched the rest of the Doctor Who's Christmas special. Interesting ending, I guess, if you want to call it interesting. Glad to hear she's about to enter time with us. Batteries Not Included was a good fun movie. Yes, Robert, I loved Batteries Not Included. It was a good fun movie. Uh, really, really weird ending. Or not weird ending, but the, the plot twist where the lady's son was dead and uh, she just she was crazy and thought this random low life was her her son that was a kind of a dark twist in there have i seen it crowd yes i have seen it crowd i loved it crowd when burnham's son came on it kind of went downhill for me i didn't like the son or renum renholds renholds son came in i didn't like renholds son but it was still a really really funny funny show in fact it may shock you to know that my one of my favorite episodes of the IT crowd was the one about willies and the play about willies. So, yeah, it was hilarious. Uh, Life with Matthew saw the mystery science version of Mac and Me. I haven't. I have not. In fact, I've seen very little mystery science theater. Well, you should definitely watch some more of that, man. It's great. I should. Since apparently, I mean, that's basically what anti truck and I are doing these days. In fact, we, we need to get our screen set up such that, like, we're the little shadow people up in the front. <laughs> oh, but, but then we couldn't actually stream it on YouTube because we're not watching open license stuff. Uh, Daniel is saying, so I got this share, but back in 2004 during Enterprise Season 4, William Shatner was supposed to be an episode of Enterprise. Uh, the episode would have been epic. I saw you link that in, in Discord. I haven't had a chance to look at it. But it, it's an interesting idea. I think it would have been a fun idea. Uh, from what you were telling me the other other week, I think there were a couple plot points they needed to, to change up to actually flow cleanly. But I think it would have been interesting. Uh, and Professor Brain Specs is saying, I haven't seen official confirmation she's leaving. True. Uh, true. I, I'm going to I'm gonna accept this as face value, though, though. I, I think she is. I think there's enough unofficial stuff yet, or so far. And I'm just going to pray that the unofficial stuff soon becomes official. Uh, Thomas has never had an alcoholic drink. Well, you know, I I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, you should totally do it because not everyone likes alcohol. Not everyone wants to drink alcohol. And if that's your choice, then I support you in, in never having a drink like that. Uh, maybe get yourself a Shirley Temple. I do love me a good Shirley Temple. The drink. It's really weird that you have to specify such things these days. Uh, Thomas Potts, Shadows, what would we, we know about Shadows? Did I miss a chat? Um, I think I missed a chat, Thomas. I don't know what Shadows we're talking about. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Although, Thomas, I did... I did watch that clip you, you sent me of the screaming ghost thing. I think it's a movie tie-in. Like, I, I did see that there's that police report or an alleged police report. I, I actually haven't seen any official re police report. But I, I did hear that it was based on a police report. And I, I, I still think that the actual footage we got was a movie tie-in. That they're, they're working to make this Blair Witch kind of found documentary movie. And if that's the case, I think they're doing a great job. I think one of the real appeals to the Blair Witch Project movie wasn't just it was uh, found footage the way that things like Cloverfield are trying to do and failing at.
but that it was it was done very organically it had a, it had a real natural feel to it in being found footage and said like oh look we found this found footage and you see this giant you know 200 foot tall monster in the background well okay obviously that's fake whereas Blair Witch did a real good job of like this is 100% unedited although it obviously was so I do think the hotel is footage is doing a great job of making it all look natural even though I've never seen a hotel that had that many camera angles <laughs> looking right at one door but hey you know maybe it's a uh, maybe it's a problematic room And Daniel's talking about the episode. Yes. It would have been interesting. And, and you know, I so it took me forever to get through season three of Enterprise. I chewed through season four of Enterprise. Season four was fantastic. I hated season three. I felt like it was way too much action, explosions. It didn't feel very Star trek -y to me. Bring in the Zindi when you already had the uh, the Suliban was weird to me. And, and just to the point where, like, the Suliban weren't even there anymore. Like, okay, bring in the, the Zindi, but at least have the Suliban be the ones pulling the strings kind of things. But no, you have this other, other, other future race and from a different dimension. Uh, so that, that was weird to me, along with all the Makos and the... It, anyway, but season four felt like Star Trek again, and it made me sad that we didn't get a season five. But it was weird. The In the Mirror Darkly, they were two interesting episodes, but they also were pointless episodes. You know, it, it was a look at, hey, let's take a quick peek into the mirror universe. OK, that's neat. Uh, it shows a reason why the mirror universe always seemed to have technology that was just a little bit better than the prime universe something that we've often just attributed to a universe that was as in a constant state of war would have naturally better militaristic stuff but actually say no it, it turns out that they have better stuff because they got the defiant almost 100 years early so i thought that was a very interesting take on it but at the end of the day i'm like well hold on this wasn't archer coming to the mirror universe it was just 100% here's the mirror universe and here's stuff happening in it. So I thought, I thought that was weird. It was a fun vignette. Maybe would have been more fun for me to be in one episode instead of two, but Hey, uh, I guess they were fun enough stories and I shouldn't complain too much. I think the reason they did it that way, it was actually to preserve continuity because by the time of the original series, nobody should have known about the mirror universe yet. So that's why they did it, uh, the two episodes with nobody from our universe, quote-unquote, coming over there. And of course, you have shows like Discovery that don't care about that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that was their intention. Yeah, see, they, they're doomed. They're doomed either way. Y you're right. They did it to avoid continuity, and here I am complaining that it didn't feature Archer from our universe. Uh, <laughs> if Archer from our universe had been in here, I would have been complaining that it broke continuity. So they're just screwed no matter what they do. <laughs> and Professor Brainy Specs, what do you want, you moon face assassin of joy? I, who, me? <laughs> oh. I, you know, I'll say this. The the first time I watched Enterprise, I was a big stickler for continuity. I'm like, this makes no sense. This is stupid. Why do they have this? Why do they have that? Why are Romulans on the view screen? Yada, yada, yada. Or they weren't because, you know, stuff was broken, whatever. But. I realized watch or after Andy Trigger talked about his uh, multi timeline theory. Watching through it this time, I did realize I'm a bit of an idiot. They actually show in the intro from the very first episode that this is a timeline that has been influenced by Picard going back in time. This is 100% a different timeline, and. Nothing like at that point, it's like, well, what does it matter then? Of course, things are happening different. It's a different timeline. And it has made me enjoy it a lot more. Something I tried with Discovery, uh, it's, it's just I can't. The writing is so horrible. Even with it being a different timeline, I'm like, well, great. It's a different timeline, but it's still bad writing. 
Thomas is saying there aren't three timelines. Well, there are at least two. No, there's three. There is the, the timeline that we're all familiar with. Oh, oh come on, Thomas. You're going to have to explain why you disagree with this. Tell me, tell me which timeline you disagree with. There is the prime timeline. That is the timeline in which uh, there were no Borg in the past. Zephyrin Cochran had his, his warp flight without any problems. Then there's the second timeline, which I think at least we can agree two timelines. The second timeline is the J.J. Abrams timeline, where Spock has gone back in time. Uh, you, had, uh, you had Captain Nero, and that created a branching timeline where now Elder Spock is in the past with young Spock. At least he used to be. And Thomas is saying Kelvin and Prime. Okay, so we agree at least on those first two timelines. I would argue that there definitely is a third timeline, and Enterprise itself supports it, in that the third timeline is the one where the Borg went back in time, and Picard went back and stopped them. And we get several references to that within Enterprise. One, uh, we see the actual footage from First Contact in the in every single opening for the show, except the Into the Mirror Darkly. Then we get a comment in season one or season two talking about how Zephyrin Cochran, whenever he got drunk, would often talk about these mechanical beings and uh, people from the future assisting him. You also get the episode where the Borg show up uh, and that, you know, messes things up. So I would say... That's a pretty strong support for three timelines, unless you want to say uh, that Picard going back is a predestination loop, where the only reason, like like Picard being back in time, is a part of the prime timeline. If you want to say that, I might argue with you a little bit, but I would see how that would still be the two timelines, where you have the prime timeline, and as part of the prime timeline, you have the Borg trying to stop Zephyrin Cochran and Picard stopping the Borg. Or you have that being two timelines where Picard, you have the timeline where the Borg never showed up and then the timeline where the Borg interfered. So so I'm, I'm curious, Thomas, what's your take? Do you think that the Borg are built into the prime timeline trying to stop Cochran or, or what's your, your stance on that? And I'm asking you this, but it's entirely possible that uh, that you've had to <laughs> had to leave for, for work stuff. So I could be sitting here a long time. And let's see, Tiki Doom is cringing at Nero. Yeah, that was that was rough. Uh, don't forget, there's an alternate 1986 timeline for the voyage home. True. Pick up the space whales. Uh, and Thomas is saying in the Voyager episode Relativity, they mention what happened in First Contact. Okay, so so your stance is that that the Prime timeline includes the attack by the Borg. I will have to rewatch Relativity, something that will not be a chore because that's, that's a great episode. I really enjoyed that episode, and I'll I'll have to I'll have to see. Maybe you're right, Thomas. I know. It's, unless the inter- probably, <laughs> go on, John. Says unless the Enterprise returned to the original timeline, but the altered one continued on, you know, in parallel. I know that's not what the writers intended, but it does fit some of the things that happened, especially in Enterprise. Hmm. Hmm. And Cinnabon Bunny agrees with Thomas. So my my hold up is that. I guess I need to rewatch Relativity. My off-the-cuff holdup is the fact that Enterprise postdates Voyager. So as a result, it's kind of like, well, did Enterprise change what used to be canon in Voyager? Or is it... Uh, Cinnabon saying that there are three timelines, the prime timeline, the J- oh, and Kurtzman. Okay, okay. Uh, so so is it that relativity, in the episode relativity, those timelines merged, which is what they, they did at times. Uh, they did that with the 
what was his name? Captain Braxton, right? I think it was. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. So you you had Captain Braxton from three different timelines, and they merged him into himself, which I don't know. That seemed weird to me. the The idea that uh, you you were pre arrested for crimes you would commit in the future, kind of Minority Report. But but beyond that, like if they had just done as you if if we pull you from the timeline more than once, we have to merge your consciousnesses together. I could have worked with that. But the we're gonna merge young you uh and old you that was like wait what and maybe what they're saying is that from the things like like a and tiki's pointing out a lot of different timelines you have the little green men timeline you have the gary seven timeline uh so i guess there are a lot of time travel stuff but maybe what they're saying is that each time a divergent happens so you have the gary seven stuff happening and then you have the way it normally would have happened maybe what they do is collapse those timelines on onto themselves so that you only have the one continuous timeline continuous it ish okay maybe maybe uh and then <laughs> there's only one timeline that's the michael burntham timeline e no uh i i'll say this also i do think that michael burnham comes from a grossly different timeline uh, there's just no way whatsoever that Michael Burnham is in either the same timeline or the same universe. You know, like the the technology they have, the aesthetics, the the holograms, all of it, 100% impossible to have predating uh, Kirk. Just just impossible, unless it turns out they're in an alternate universe. Not the mirror universe, but just a truly alternate universe. And yes, I don't know how to clap multiple timelines, obviously. Now, let's see, Daniel saying, Matthew, remember in Star Trek First Contact when the Borg went back in time and created a Earth they assimilated? That timeline universe still exists according to the branching timeline theory. Interesting. I guess that would be kind of the the idea of like the uh, the the episode of the the city on the edge of forever or the guardian of the edge of edge forever, where when McCoy went back in time, everything else that wasn't on the planet was affected. However, because they were next to the guardian, they were protected from that that branching timeline, and so both those could potentially exist. And, and yeah, yeah, uh, okay, so yes, you guys are, are rapidly pointing out that if we really wanted to get into this, you would have the Space Whales timeline, you would have the Gary Seven timeline, you would have uh, you, you would have several timelines in TNG, like the the looping death timeline, the one where they kept running into uh, another ship that had been caught in a time loop, and it was only because Data looked at the three pips on Riker that he figured out, no, I need to go with Riker's plan or else we all die. Uh, Voyager did a lot of time travel. So yeah, there would technically be a ton of branching timelines. That's something worth thinking about. I mean, you raise a serious hole in the three timeline theory when you point out how much time travel there has been and how that should mean there are tons and tons and tons of time travel. Now, maybe what you could say is that the prime timeline is the timeline following our main characters and how they influence the timeline and that anything that uh, goes beyond what our main characters does is the branching timeline and creating a, a new reality. But that might be me really stretching to fit an idea that I just want to work, you know? <laughs> or we could say that in most of these situations, they didn't create a new timeline. The timeline changed, but by the end of the episode, they fixed it. Oh. So it went, it went away. So I'm also wondering if in the JJ verse, did they really did they really create a new timeline 
or did they just go to like a different universe? Because it seems like to me, even when Nero first showed up, it was already different than what the Prime Universe should have looked like at the time. That there was some other point of divergence somewhere. Hmm. All right, so expound on that. How is how is it different with uh, his first arrival uh, w with uh, Kirk's dad? Well, on, um, that, well, the ship that they run into, the Kelvin, doesn't look like anything what a Starfleet ship should look like in that time okay. period. Because we've seen ships like that. They, they didn't have bridge windows and that, all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff was already present. And now there's also details about Kirk. I mean, he wasn't born on a shuttlecraft, you know, fleeing a ship. I know that happened right after Nero showed up. But I'm pretty sure he, he says he was born in Iowa, which wouldn't have happened if he was on his starship in the middle of space, far away mm -hmm. from Earth, with his mom about to go into labor and stuff like that. True. I mean, even if you were saying that she went to premature labor, it didn't seem like they were all that close to Earth or even headed toward Earth such that... Uh, she's like, okay, well, I went, I went to labor like a couple weeks early. Well, I think you're a little further away than Earth. I think that's a good point, John. I think it was meant to be the Prime Universe. It's just JJ, just JJ. I, I'm gonna stop the sentence there. <laughs> just JJ. And there was a point that Jeff made earlier, I believe, where he said, um, well, Spock and Nero didn't go back to the same time. They showed up like decades apart. But if Nero changed the timeline, how would Spock show up in the same timeline? Wouldn't he end up in a different timeline? Hmm. Maybe. I guess if I were to techno babble my way out of this, I would say that Nero and Spock entered from our side of the timeline at about the same time. It was just as they traveled through time, they had a difference in where they exited that time stream. Such that, yes, the timeline that Spock came from was gone, but Spock was shielded by being within that time stream, whatever you want to call it, the, the time tunnel. So that would, that would be my techno babble excuse for that. Uh, and Brainy Professor Specs, I would love to know how you set up OBS. I would love to go over it. In fact, I need to do several videos about it. Now is a great time because I'm having to do everything from scratch, having to rebuild it all. So what better time to record how I do things than as I have to do them? <laughs> and let's see, uh, Multigunman is saying that he needs to go to bed. Have a great night. Uh, Multigunman, yes, it is very, very true. Uh, you know, we, we've been going for an hour and a half today. I I tried to do a little extra because rough days, just having a little fun hangout with you guys, you know. Uh, but it is 11.15. I, I probably should be hanging for bed also. Uh, so we will get things wrapped up here. Tom's is saying, isn't it odd a Romulan has the name of a Roman emperor from Earth? Yeah, but I mean, I've met people named like Moonbeam and Diamond and River. So let's, let's be honest, parents often name their kids weird things. And let us not forget my newest favorite producer slash writer, Thunder Levin, the writer producer of Sharknado. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Oh, wait. Oh, gosh. I'm an idiot. We, we got right into this. And, John, I never asked you what you thought of the episode. Well, I thought it was a fun episode, like I say, every week, pretty much. I like that they brought back a plot point that they um, dropped earlier in the season. And Dr. Raleigh is always fun to watch. He is. Uh... I enjoyed it also. I liked the fact that uh, Krieg has gotten his promotion and you got you get to see him kind of acting within his role, his, his new promotion role. Uh, I like the fact that we've gotten to see everyone develop over the season. I like the fact that it's not just the, the Captain Bridger show. 
that we are definitely getting a treat seeing lots of different people take the helm, as it were. And the doctor got to give some orders this week and solve an emergency situation without a whole lot of uh, you know, assistance from the, the command crew, at least the senior officers. Uh, Professor Brainy Specs is saying, I didn't answer your question earlier about Sharknado and my wife. I apologize. I, I missed that 100%. Let's see. Let's see if I can't find it real quick here. Um, or, or if you can copy paste that, maybe that would help because I'm not seeing it. Was it a long time ago? Um, oh, oh, here we go. Wow. Matthew loves Sharknado. Am I breaking up with my wife? No. Never, never, ever. Uh, my wife is, is too good for me. I would never break up with her. I, I'm constantly amazed that she doesn't break up with me. But by the grace of God, she, she sticks with me. <laughs> and Thomas, you know what? Uh, he's saying, uh, my watch shows a song from Jurassic Park soundtrack, and the title is Stegosaurus. Uh, I, I would love to see you do a let's play of this this uh, Jurassic Evolution game you're playing. It sounds like a really fun one that I don't have, so I, I'd love to see it. Or, or Cinnabon. Cinnabon is playing it too, apparently. Get a little mix in from Cyberpunk. Uh, but I love Sharknado. It's true. It's true, Professor Brainy Specs. Uh, I, have, I have a lot of love in my heart. There's a lot of love, Matt's love to go around. Uh, Thomas is saying I'm not capable of streaming. Oh, I don't believe that, Thomas. Even if all you have is a, a, a one monitor, uh, lightweight computer, you can stream. I guarantee it. And hopefully I will actually, you know, put my money where my mouth is and do some more how to set this stuff up and prove that even with one monitor, you too could do all this. Won't my wife get jealous? She's understanding. She's very understanding. Not as understanding as the French are, but she's still very understanding. And John, just to wrap things up, was there any part of the episode you felt didn't make sense? Or or bad part of the episode? Uh, there's nothing that comes to mind. I, I thought it was entertaining. I say if if I was to get really really nitpicky, the most I could say is their their conflict where they couldn't tell them felt a little contrived. Um, it, it felt like they could have said, uh, you know, we've been doing research in the area. Size our seismic sensors are showing that, or we suspect that like there's lava filling up a lava to something yada 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 i feel like they could have breached the divide a little bit better or set up a, a stronger reason for why they're in danger like maybe they moved the buoy ahead of time and at first sequest didn't even know they were there and so now is a race to get them off the island after they realized like some stray transmission happened or, or something happened where they realized that there was someone back on the island so they had to go back and rescue them um but that's a nitpick. That's an extreme nitpick on my part. That's me being an uh, armchair editor. Uh, so beyond that, great episode. Love seeing the character development. I'm, I'm so happy we're watching this. <laughs> the captain and the doctor looked kind of friendly there at the end. There might be something going on there. They did. And I, I've long been suspicious been wondering if they weren't going to develop a little something something throughout the the series going back to the the only episode i would say is kind of a bad episode the ghost ship episode the one where we find out that spirits can't harm children or even lewis or even lewis <laughs> mostly children See, it turns out all you have to do is make the legal age for adulthood 70, and no one would ever be at risk of being hurt by a ghost. 
Yes, lawyer is the ghost's one weakness. <laughs> hey, we may be evil, but we're lawful evil. And Diamond is telling me to go to 2052 in the episode of Relativity. I will make a note to watch that point specifically, but I am going to watch the whole episode. I love it. <laughs> well, guys, let me let me stop saying we're going to stop and actually stop the stream. Uh, I do appreciate you all hanging out with me tonight. Uh, don't let your heart be, be troubled, guys. God's in control. These days will pass, and I'm glad that I, we have this community to hang out with and have fun. Uh, until these days pass. And Wesley Crusher, oh my goodness, again, showing up just a second too late. Oh, sorry, Wes. Well, hopefully someone else can start streaming something. Maybe Cinnabon, huh? Yeah? Uh, Cinnabon? He's saying that he has streamed a little bit of the game. Maybe he could stream some more? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens, guys. Well, I hope you've had a fun night tonight, and we look forward to seeing you in six days on the next episode of Sequest DSV. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will. And be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified of all the updates I do on this channel. If you want to support the work I'm doing here, then I hope you'll consider becoming one of my Patreons, where you'll get early access to all kinds of videos. And until the next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.